Hello everyone and welcome to Nonprofit Enthusiast Live. I'm your host, Lashina Williams, and I'm so excited to be back here this week to continue our conversation on fund development and year-end planning. If this is your first time tuning in, we have a theme every month and if you are trying to figure out where should i focus on for my nonprofit organization i'm wearing so many hats what should i zoom in on we recommend that you follow our themes if you missed any sessions you definitely could go back to the guide section of the group and check out a menu of other um sessions that we've had talking about various topics from year-end planning board development you name it there's just a wealth of content in there and we strongly encourage you to check it out. So today I am excited to talk about and continue the conversation around fund development and year-end planning. Um, if you missed it last week, I came on and spoke briefly about investing in professional development for your organization, for yourself, for your um, organization, uh, for your different team members, volunteers, you know, just investing in professional development as a whole. So definitely check out that video last week. But today I want to talk about something a little bit different when it comes to fund development and year end planning. And one of it, um, the topic I want to really kind of talk about is finding funds with the, within the resources that you have. Um, so oftentimes, of course, you know, um, as nonprofit um, professionals, our favorite conversation is how do I get the money, right? But today's conversation is how do I get the money with the resources that I already have nearby me that I can reach, especially as we get ready for um, what the year end is going to look like. So, um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is some um, strategies to maximize the current resources that you have for your organization, identifying potential sources of funding might that might just be right there that you may not have zoomed in on. Um, and then we'll make that part of homework because, you know, we like to talk about homework. It's kind of looking at what do you have um, currently within the resources within your organization that you could just lean into a little bit more um, in order to be able to get those funds uh, for your organization. So one area I want to talk about first is um, grant diversification. If you are an organization that rely heavily on, let's say, one grant or um, maybe one foundation and so forth, uh, taking a look at what do we have and what opportunities do we have within our organization to be able to diversify the funding that comes in? I remember working with um, an amazing consultant who they were able to look at our nonprofits, uh, three main programs and quickly identify diversification of funding, like within seconds. Um, so I encourage you to kind of take a moment and look at that for your organization. So for instance, I'll give you that example. So for instance, um, Love Our Youth, we have three major components, which is, um, and I'm going to talk about the main two, but we have um, Love Our Youth, where we provide direct services to youth. So eat quickly, they were like, yep, that's direct, um, that's grants, you know, as your one of your main focus areas. Of course, you can still get funding from other revenue um, sources, fundraising, so forth. But they're like grants. Okay. I'm like, okay, I can see that. Um, uh, then there's um, Love Our Community, which is our, our program that focuses on connecting volunteers with uh, youth organizations within the community and then also with capacity builders. So that's more like for us, that's more like in kind, um, in kind services that eventually kind of help, cult, you know, help with relationships for our other programs. And you'll see why. And then our um, other, our th third main program is Love Others, where we, this is a fee for service program where nonprofit organizations or corporations who are seeking to execute um, the common goal of serving our youth will reach out to us and we're able to help with corporate activations or help launch various programs using our project management um, model. So with that, they are into like, you know, that's fee for service. So those are things that we, you know, we get uh, uh, funding coming into our organization in exchange for the services that we provide. So I challenge you all to take a look at your existing programs and see, am I really tapping into the um, funding sources that can help fund these programs? And then also taking a look at your existing programs to see, is there opportunity to do the same thing just a little differently 
um, not losing uh, you know, who you are as an organization, but I'm um, doing it a little bit differently to be able to increase um, the diversification of funding that's coming within your organization. So just think about that. Um, the next thing is re reallocating existing funds. So one thing I would encourage you all, especially as we go into year in planning, take a look at your budget, look at your, um, your actual budget, compared to what you forecasted for the year. And I know we're on different um, fiscal years. So of course, depending where you are, if you're getting ready to wrap up for December, and this is all always a good practice anyway, take a look at where your um, actuals are and then where you're landing. And then it might be a matter of reallocating resources if it allows, assuming that you have some unrestricted funding in there. And even with your restricted funding, with the um, grants and so forth, sometimes you will see, yeah, we forecasted that we're going to spend X, Y, Z in um, um, program staffing, but in reality, we're really blowing it out in program supplies. And sometimes it's as simple as, as communicating with your funder as to, you know, uh, and being able to justify why that's happening to kind of reallocate those funds. Uh, so sometimes you may find that you're, you're, you're fundraising for a certain line, let's say, um, or lines within your organization. But take a look at your overall budget, see how you're doing and see if there's opportunities to be able to identify areas where you can reallocate your existing funds to support other um, critical projects and initiatives that you have going on. Uh, the other thing is to uh, fundraising events is always a, a way to kind of leverage your existing resources. Of course, I would definitely recommend if you are going to look into doing some sort of fundraising event or and I'll kind of lump this into some other categories I was going to talk about or some sort of online fundraising um, for your organization, just making sure that there's no significant cost up front and that you're able to fund that initiative up front um, prior to um, uh, proceeding with it. Because I've seen many times where organizations will host events, fundraising events is an attention, but really at the end of the day, it's just the event. Um, they're not um, making any additional funds for the organization to help um, fund its mission. It's just really kind of event, a gathering uh, opportunity to kind of share who they are, but not being able to extend beyond that. And that can you know, for some organizations, especially smaller organizations, that can be detri detrimental if you're hosting events just to really host them and cutting into um, the funds that you have. So take a look at that if you are going to do it. But then also it can work to your benefit if you do find that, hey, I got a lot of um, resources around. I have a, a place that's going to donate the location. I have a sponsor that will cover all of the food. I have um, all of this here. I just never put them all together. Maybe it's just a matter of putting together some sort of event to help um, diversify our funds. So remember, today, my focus is not just talking about fund development as a whole. I'm really talking about what's already around us uh, that we can use, uh, zoom into a little bit more to be able to help us when it comes to um, supporting our mission. So just in case you tuned in, um, in the middle of the conversation, I just want to make sure that you have some context. All right, so that's there. The other thing is that we oftentimes look past for some organization, because some organizations are really good at doing this, in-kind donations. Um, again, taking a look, when you're looking at doing that financial analysis, you might notice while you look down the lines, a lot of our funds are going to program supplies, and we have um, these these corporations, these organizations that reached out and said, hey, we will donate what you need when it comes to supplies wise, what is it? So it might be a matter of kind of looking at uh, what that looks like for your organization, refreshing your needs list with what you currently need that can help um, free up some of the funds that you're using within your organization, but still being able to have an impact. All right. Um, and then that also leads into the same thing about um, corporate partnerships. 
uh, doing some cause related marketing um, with corporate partnerships? What relationships do you have that you know it will align with your organization? It's just a matter of you kind of knocking, um, you know, um, you built that relationship over time and it's now you're at the, that's that phase of like, yeah, you know, it, it's time for us to really um, to to. Uh, the solicitation fund uh, portion of the fund development cycle, being able to really make that ax um, with this um, organization. So definitely look at that. I talked earlier about earned income streams. Uh, there might be things within your nonprofit, like you are the leader in, in our example, in, um, in project management processes, systems for our nonprofit organizations. That's how... Um, we're positioned as the leader, and that's one of our um, our, our strong suits. Uh, and that's why, and honestly, how we do that, I've shared this for those of you who've tuned in before, we do this using a collective impact framework. So we're not just managing a project. We're getting everyone in the room, on the same page, walking in the same direction so that we can have a larger impact. And I must say, it's a really good um I enjoy being a part of that amazing model. Um, for instance, like on this weekend, an example of that is we're gonna we're gonna be able to serve over. We're doing a few different um, cause marketing initiatives where a thousand hygiene kits is going out this weekend. There's gonna be, um, I believe it's gonna be. I'm trying to remember all the numbers. Uh, Five hundred volunteer thank you cards for volunteers that serve. Um, through VISTA programs. And there's gonna be over a hundred uh, uh, kits that go out to um, youth in foster care this weekend. And a lot of that is because we found an organization that aligned with what we're seeking to do and building the community and also being able, us seeking to be able to be that connector using a collective impact model. Um, and we're able to connect them now to other organizations that's able to do that and serve as that liaison, still meeting our mission of um, our, for our Love Others program and just our organization as a whole, but being able to, each of us being able to play at our strengths in order to have a large impact within the organization. So for some organization, this looks a little different. They might go out and offer um, specialized training based off of the topic area of their mission, workshops and so forth, and use that as a way to bring earn um, income into the organization. So what resources, again, so the purpose of today is to look at, you already got the resources. Uh, and of course, there's things that you wanna continue to bring in, but take a moment and pause, especially as we talk about year-end planning. What resources do we already have around us that we're just not tapping into? Um, so that's why I'm kind of bringing some of these things up for you to think about. What is that and what does that look like for our organization? So I know I shared quite a few things and I'll go back over them really quickly. But I mean, I'm also going to talk about homework again. So homework is taking a look, just taking a moment. Because I know sometimes as executive directors, board members, um, volunteers, leaders within the organization, we are wearing so many hats that that moment <laughs> um, takes a while or it's hard for us to take that moment. So let's take that moment right now. Think about what area within our organization that's currently existing that has the opportunity to be able to um, continue to leverage current resources and um, and be able to bring in additional funds or reallocate funds within our organization as long as it's permitted, depending on how um, the funding that you have in place. Um, what relationships do we currently have that we're really not tapping into as much based off of the need that we're have, having? What are our fundraising goals that we have where there's portions of it that really could be in kind? Um, to help free up some of uh, the line items that we have within uh, planning those upcoming fundraising events. Uh, what are some services that we provide that adds amazing value to the community that we are able to be able to use it as an earned income model for our organization to be able to continuously bring funds uh, to the organization? Um, membership, what kind of membership program can I create to engage 
or can we create, I'm sorry, to engage our donors to be able to donate on a reoccurring basis within our organization. We've been, um, they there's some that show that they wanna get more involved. How can we strategize to have them um, give on a more frequent basis? So the whole purpose of today's conversation is just to think about what does that look like for my organization? I kind of gave you some general areas, but what does that look like for us as we go into the end of the year, which is approaching quickly, how can we tap into the resources that's around us? Um, and we are hear it all the time. You know, it, it costs whether it's in business or whether it's with um, volunteerism or whether it's with donors. It costs a lot less to really tap into the donors that you have already in in. Um, make the most of those relationships does, than it does to bring in new relationships. And especially as we reach the end of this year, just make sure that you're maximizing all those wonderful relationships that you've built over the years um, and looking into the things that we discussed today. So I hope that information is helpful for you, for you all. I hope that causes you to really pause and think about what does this mean? The year end is coming up. You know what are what what can we do with what we already have and play? Because one thing I can tell you as nonprofit professionals, we are very creative. Um, you could put us in a room with very limited supplies and say, "Create this," and we we make it happen, right? <laughs> so um, same thing here. Just take a moment and just think about that. What does that look like for your organization? So, all right. So when you um, if you're here tuning in on replay, give us a hashtag replay so that we know you are here. Um, as you do your homework, let us know that you're doing the homework. You don't have to wait until Thursdays to drop it in the chat. You can um, go into the group and say, hey, I thought about this. Like, let us know. Let's let's be able to support one another in that fashion. Or, hey, I'm stuck. I thought about this. I got an idea. I just need to get it out. Anybody got have any um, ways they think I can do this? Drop it in the group um, and we'll definitely chime in and be able to support you on that. And then also take a moment because we haven't done this in a while. If you have a friend that you know need to be tuning in, take a moment, go up to the invite button, click invite and go ahead and invite them to the group so that they can join. Can we invite like five people, maybe five if we each invite five, we'll continue to grow. And guess what? The great thing about as we continue to grow is more of us to be able to learn and grow from each other. So we're in this together. Um, so please take a moment and do that. Other than that, I thank you all so much for tuning in today and look forward to next week, continuing the conversation on year end planning and fund development. And I will see you all next week. Bye, everyone.